Dr. Alan Strauss wakes up super groggy. He looks confused, so he grabs his glasses to have a better sense of where he's at. As he gets out of the bed, chains rattle around his legs. He's confused as to who would padlock him in this room. Then he tries to break the chains by tugging at it. He tries to find his way out to the door, but he can't reach it. Then he screams for help, but no one can hear him. He sees his toothbrush and his pills on his nightstand. There's also a bedpan bathroom by his bed. A couple days before this, a man named Gene is in a session with Dr. Alan Strauss. He says his dad used to beat him up all the time and it has messed up his behavior. Gene read Alan's book and he enjoyed it. Gene says he has eye problems and refuses to take off his sunglasses. One night, Alan is having a nightmare of a dead woman beside him and a creepy looking baby. We can assume this is probably his wife and child. The next day, he goes to see his son Ezra and he gives Ezra the guitar Ezra's mom used to own. In one of his sessions with Gene, Alan notices that Gene isn't open enough. Gene tends to be vague and talks around his actual issues. Gene looks frustrated that these therapy sessions aren't working. One night, Alan hears a commotion outside his house. Like every stupid white person in horror movies, he goes to check out the noise. And of course, someone takes him in the shadows. In the room, Alan hears someone taking a piss. It's Gene who has taken him and he goes upstairs. Alan begs Gene to let him out. Gene says they're in the woods and no one is around, so his screams won't be heard. He tries to assure Alan that it's not as bad as it seems and all he needs is Alan's help. Gene says he's out of options because he wasn't getting anywhere in therapy. He couldn't tell the truth in Alan's office, but now he can. Gene ignores Alan's cries for help while Gene serves him takeout. Gene says his name is actually Sam. Sam says he has a compulsion to kill people. Every once in a while, he'll kill people, and it's gone on for a long time. He wants to stop, but there's this one guy that he wants to kill. Sam said he's nothing like Hannibal because he feels guilt. Alan tries to convince Sam that they can do the regular sessions like before in his office, but Sam said he's going to commit a crime soon, so he can't allow that. Sam says he's met with three other Jewish therapists, but he chose Alan. A few nights later, Sam brings home some pork buns. Alan says he's no longer Sam's therapist anymore, he's his prisoner. Sam grabs a box and explains that he's the John Doe killer. His point was to try to make all his killings look like a robbery. But police were calling him the John Doe killer because it took a while for police to figure out who the victims were. Sam nonchalantly asks if Alan wants one of the watches. Alan says no thanks. Alan reminisces about the good times with his wife. Then Sam enters the room with a bunch of books and breakfast. Sam leaves and says he'll be home by five. Alan eats and looks at the fork to see if it would help open the padlock. Unfortunately, it just breaks. Then Alan hears someone upstairs. Later, Sam brings home a bunch of Thai food. Alan fantasizes killing Sam. Then Sam realizes Alan tried to use the plastic fork to open the padlock. Sam admits that after killing people, he feels dead inside. He hopes Dr. Alan can help him. But if Alan doesn't want to be part of the process, Sam implies that he won't need Alan anymore. Dr. Alan Strauss then agrees to start the sessions. He explains that therapy sessions aren't supposed to have looming fear, otherwise it won't work. Alan says Sam should at least try to make a promise not to kill anyone or Alan. And if that compulsion comes up, Sam promises to talk to Alan first so they can address Alan's emotions. One night, Alan hears loud noises coming from upstairs. Then the next morning, Alan meditates and remembers some family bonding time. That night, it goes sour as his wife throws the cake. Alan says their son is just rebelling at the moment. Sam talks about him doing an inspection on a Greek restaurant. He mentions he used to go to it when he was married. Sam explained how some items were not properly stored and he told the owner this. The owner spoke to him in a condescending way and Sam hated this. This happened four months ago and Sam still hasn't stopped thinking about him every single day. Eventually, Sam went back to the restaurant and just watched the owner and waited until it closed. He never actually did anything at that time because it was around the time Sam started talking to Alan about his issues. Sam thinks the more time passes, the less people would connect him to that restaurant. He wants to commit the crime then says these therapy sessions aren't helping. 
Sam goes to the restroom and pees for an excessively long time. The next day, Sam leaves for work. Alan gets up and hears noises from upstairs again. This time Alan asks if they can hear him. As he continues to ask questions, someone comes down the stairs with a weapon. The woman introduces herself as Candice, Sam's mom. Candice admits she knows who Alan is and was the one who told Sam to reach out to Alan for help. Alan asks Candice to unlock him, but Candice says she doesn't have the key. She says she can't turn in her own son. Alan begs for help because his son and daughter needs him. However, Candice admits she knows this is wrong but needs to help her son. Once Sam gets home, he takes the bedpan and cleans it up. Alan is surprised that Sam lied about his dead parents. Sam said his mother isn't his problem. Alan then says he needs Sam to remove the chains in order for the therapy to work. Alan reassures him that he's a weak office guy and Sam is a strong young man. Then Alan fantasizes about killing him again. Sam's father left him when he was just 14. But it was bittersweet because his father could no longer hit him anymore. Apparently he got hit in the very room they are in right now. His father had a short temper. He would hit Sam over the smallest things and his father would sometimes hit Candace. At their son's wedding, Alan's wife wants to sing, but the rabbi tells her they don't allow women to sing. People get up to leave as she's about to start. Back to the unorthodox therapy sessions, Alan suggests they should get Sam's mother involved with therapy. Sam starts to fiddle with his fingers, just thinking about his mom getting involved with the sessions. Candice describes her ex-husband as a terrible man. They took refuge in each other, Alan says he wants Sam to protect his mother by not acting on his impulses. Candice cries and Alan hands her some tissues. Sam doesn't say anything when Candice asks Sam if he will stop for her. Sam gets home and tells Alan that he went back to the Greek restaurant. Sam said he wants to teach the owner how to behave. He didn't go through with it though. Alan wonders if it was like this with his past victims and Sam agrees that yes, each one deserved it. Back to his son's wedding, more people get up to leave since it's not allowed for men to listen to women sing in the Jewish faith. Flashbacks happen showing his wife dying of cancer. Then at night, Sam brings a tied up man home, then stuffs him into a smaller room. Alan is frightened as Sam just leaves the room soon after. The next morning, Alan stares at the door still frightened from last night. Sam went back to the restaurant with the intent to kill the restri owner, but stopped himself and brought him home instead. He figured to follow Alan's advice, to talk to Alan before he ended up killing again. Sam ferociously says he wants to go in there and kill him. He says his father effed him up. Alan convinces Sam to go to work, otherwise people would suspect him, and going to work may actually help him calm down. Sam goes to work, but there's an emptiness in his eyes as he leaves. Alan hears the man pleading for help, so Alan responds, but he whispers just in case Candice overhears. Alan calls Sam a lunatic and tells the man that he's been stuck there for three days. Candice comes down and tells Alan that Sam has always been like this. But she says Sam feels bad about it. At work, it seems everyone loves Sam. Sam seems happy getting this positive reinforcement from everyone. Later, the man in the closet says he's scared. They talk about each other's family members. Alan mentions that his son became an orthodox Jew, a super strict Jew and has strayed from the family. Candice comes down with the house phone. It's Sam and he wants to talk to Alan. Sam says he will come back and is going to kill the man in the closet now. Alan tries to tell Sam to stay at work until the end of the day and Sam says he'll try. The man is afraid he's going to die tonight so he leaves a message for his family. All he wants his parents to know is that he loves them so much. This reminds Alan of the time his whole family was enjoying each other. It turns sour when his son takes out Tupperwares and refuses the non-kosher food. Sam finally comes back from work. He puts a white noise machine in the small closet so he can have a private session with Alan. Sam says he can't handle it anymore, but then Alan convinces him to stop. He convinces Sam to go see his ex-wife because it may give him an emotional shock to shift him out of his emotional state. Sam agrees to do this. Before Sam leaves, Alan asks if he could turn off the noise machine. Sam is tempted once again to go in the room and kill the guy, but he doesn't. He just unplugs the machine from the outside. The guy says he's not doing so good. Alan sings to calm him down. Then the guy introduces himself as Elias. 
Let us know if we should do a part two. Thank you. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.